First of all, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I'd also ex like to extend that respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders that are present here today. So I'm just going to be making some very brief comments. I think a lot of people here have been involved with the process for the last couple of years with the ALRC report, the Productivity Re um, Commission report, and then the subsequent amendments that have been going on. But um, I think we're, we all know, we've all talked about the reality of copyright form. It's often contested, it's complex, and for us it often suffers just that lack of profile with other political issues in Australia. So, we, but we, surprisingly we have made some inroads uh, over the recent years, and you know, we're not at the end of that journey by any means, um, but we, we, we've started the process. And so I suppose I should go back to what the government has been thinking about in kind of the guiding principles. And they've obviously been influenced by the uh, report and review processes that have happened. And it's basically the creation of a system that allows effective engagement with and protection of creative content. Um, so copyright, of course, has always been vital in ensuring that our creative sector can thrive in Australia and survive. Um, and so it's probably even more important today given there are so many avenues for content dissemination and consumption. But we're obviously, the government's aware uh, that the balance is critical. And so um, while we've given, there's, we've given priority to the rights of users to access copyright materials, we're aware that there's very strong public interest needs to make sure that uh, everyday Australians can also get access to that material. So that's kind of the lens that we continue to look at through, and we've talked a lot about that today. Um, I suppose going on to the consultation that's happened, many here probably would feel like they've suffered a death of consultation in copyright reform, not the last four years, last 10, last 15 years. And I think that's just the reality of, of where we're going in terms of reform. Um, it would be nice, uh, we've seen, it's not just happening here, it's happening in other jurisdictions as well. So we'll, we're continuing to engage with all the stakeholders here and I, I thank you all, from, especially from the department's perspective, for all those people who have spent long hours drafting submissions and digging up evidence for us. We really appreciate that and I particularly thank giving, being here today the Australian Digital Alliance who do provide that very unique perspective, uh, that, unique, that user perspective and that that provides really important information for us. So, what have we done over the last couple of years? Um, so obviously the Australian Law Reform Commission report and then that was closely followed by the Productivity Commission report. Um, well, they highlighted, you know, the key objectives of the Act remain generally valid, but obviously there's a lot to do to modernise the framework and the key provisions. So the government made a decision that rather than attempting to kind of consult on a really significant package of reforms all at once, they have done this staged approach. Um, and it's really been a bit of an attempt to make sure there was that continual in-depth, careful and genuine consultation so that we could get some of these pieces of legislation through Parliament. So obviously the first one, just quickly, was the um, Copyright Amendment, Disability and Other Measures Act. This was probably the, a really important start to the process because it was a, basically where stakeholders did come together, and we've talked about that today, about sides, but this was where all stakeholders did come together and thought of some really good outcomes that they needed in these spaces based on the recommendations from the ALRC report. And so we got some really positive outcomes like just talked about having an affair dealing for disability and making sure that's quite flexible, it's not format specific and it will be adaptable to the kind of changing accessibility needs. Um, we, there was provisions to make it easier for students and educators to use material online and most particularly for online exams. We made it more flexible for uh, the education institutions and collecting societies to come to agreement about use of copyright material. And so similar to what Trina highlighted, we have, have done the preservation, uh, more broader um, and flexible preservation exceptions for our GLAM institutions to make sure they can um, 
protect our cultural heritage and make it available for, um, for all Australians. We also, as part of that package, created a standard term for copyright, so no longer were unpublished materials having perpetual copyright, there's now a standard term. And again, that goes back to that importance of making sure we've got value, uh, we've got access to our valuable historic and cultural uh, material. Um, the next, uh, next, we're kind of skipping regulations. That was, that was basically something that again needed to get done um, given our regime for regulations, but it did give us a chance to go through and kind of really um, simplify some of the situations in the processes for our uh, legislation and and it also gave it was an opportunity to go and look at the technological protection measure exceptions and to update those and basically make sure that the exceptions that are in the act under especially under the day on act were now able to um, to be worked with um, the third one is code word safe harbor um, that's the, the government again had asked the department to do some pretty extensive consultations on this issue and where we got to in the end, given that this is an issue that's not unique to Australia, it's, as we saw from Julia, it's an, these issues that are relating to Safe Harbour, uh, some of the things that have been debated are in the EU and the US and in other jurisdictions about basically about that, the right of the creative sector to ensure that they can get that their um, financial reward for online work. And that was a kind of a key issue for our government. Uh, where we got to was that we, that the government recognised that the, our public interest institutions should make sure that they are safe from risk of liability for providing really important online um, resources. And we've got things like, you know, the National Library doing things like Trove, where they're digitising web, digitizing websites. They now can do that with much more comfort that they can, if there's a problem and someone doesn't want that site there, that they can they can um, ask for it to be taken down. Um, <clears throat> so the other point I should probably reflect there is that the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission is obviously also looking at issues around digital platforms and the way that they're interacting with copyright infringement. I encourage everyone to get involved in that process. That will, there will be a report to government and that may influence future reform in that area. Um, just quickly, website blocking. These were, this was based on a review that, that, um, that was required two years after the initial amendments, which allowed the federal court to take injunct to uh, make injunctions against internet service providers. Uh, some of the changes that we made was it was ex it's now extended to search engines, and it's also um, has kind of made it more um, a more easy way to kind of adapt to proxy and um, mirror websites that, that jump up. And it's also allowed a slightly broader range of websites and online locations to be included in any application. So what everyone's probably oops, really more interested in is where to next. And what's happened um, in 2018 was the government committed to do much more consultation on the key issues around flexible exceptions, whether um, what capacity there is to contract, contract out of exceptions and, and whether there should be limited liability for use of orphan works. So um, we, the department took a pretty intensive process for that. We've had 89 submissions, over 40 one-on-one -on -one meetings, six round tables. Further uh, consultations were undertaken at the end of the year to road test some specific proposals. And so the question might be, where have we landed? Well, the government's considering our very comprehensive advice. What was, where were the, some of the places that we kind of landed on? Um, it's just, uh, so for most, most stakeholders agreed that there should be improved access to orphan works. Uh, many and most stakeholders agreed that some of the existing exceptions from libraries and archives could be further updated um, to provide greater certainty than what's currently provided under section 200 of AB. Most stakeholders agreed that there are clear exceptions that should not be allowed to be contracted out for any reason. However, copyright owners do continue to prefer stronger control over their rights and they would like to retain an ability to grant access uh, for use at an appropriate price. But of course, we also are aware that the issues around exceptions is still important. Uh, so obviously we're going to continue to provide advice on the government as necessary and we'll see what happens. 
Um, I'll leave it there and leave it to my New Zealand colleagues to, to talk about what's happening there. But I suppose it really is that issue that there's going... To, we're very lucky that at the moment we've got... We're creating closer relationships with many of our, um, our international colleagues. We've got important work going on in the UK to do a very comprehensive cost-benefit analysis of their exceptions reforms, and I think that will be very important in terms of... Um, providing evidence, again, for the government about how that has they have worked in, in practice. Uh, and obviously there'll be ongoing issues. I, I always mention artificial intelligence as, the, as maybe the new non-human creator. So will, there'll be issues like that that we'll, we'll start to have to think about as well. Thank you. <laughs>